Tonight, a call to action on the alarming number of fatal drug overdoses in South Australia and a regional airline bites back against airport upgrades in Wyala. With the latest from around the region, your nightly news with Louise Hedger begins now. Good evening. The number of deaths caused by drug overdoses has increased by 40% in some areas of regional South Australia, according to a new report released today. Health advocates are now calling for more to be done to save lives. They're the figures that prove the fatal impact of drugs in regional communities. We've seen a 55% increase uh, since 2013 in South Australia for overdoses. The Pennington Institute releasing its annual report into drug deaths ahead of International Overdose Awareness Day this Saturday. It shows the climbing rates of people overdosing in rural parts of South Australia, with 15 people losing their lives in 2017 alone. It's actually happening per head of population more in the country than what it is in the city. A surge in over-the-counter drugs combining with illicit substances like ice and heroin proving to have fatal consequences. And we're talking about often more than four different types of drugs. But the Stepping Stones Rehabilitation Centre in Port Augusta is working to drive those figures down, offering beds, kitchen facilities and recreational activities to help support drug users on their road to recovery. They're locking in with um, qualified counsellors and staff to help you um, overcome your addictions. Health workers say to reduce further loss of lives, there needs to be increased awareness about the potentially deadly effects of drug use. Addiction is, can affect everybody, it's just not one person's story, it's everybody's story. They're preventable deaths, their effects are really far reaching and we know how we can prevent them, we just need to do more of it. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. The National Mental Health Commission has visited Port Lincoln today, meeting with local communities and government. It's one of the last stops on the Commission's national tour as it plans its 2030 vision for mental health and suicide prevention. It's a plan set to tackle the big issues affecting mental health. The National Commission are visiting 23 communities across the nation, trying to seek input in its 2030 vision for mental health and suicide prevention. Port Lincoln is one of the key regional areas that, we are at, that we're visiting. We've done um, remote communities across the top of Australia. We've done metropolitan areas, but this is a really key regional community where there's a lot of good things happening. Port Lincoln is the only regional town in South Australia to be chosen. Organisers meet in community leaders and services to understand what's working in the mental health system and what needs to be improved. We know that there are things that need to be fixed and addressed today, but we also need a plan to build a system that is fit for purpose in 2030 and beyond. The public forums helping the Commission tap into the local problems facing mental health across the nation. Port Lincoln Support Service is a point of interest for the Commissioner. Very much community grown, community owned programs that we were interested to understand more of, but also there's a unique dynamic of industry, um, access to service. Mentally for EP says today's an important opportunity to highlight the challenges faced in regional communities. Services will be something that comes up as number one, so that is something that we're asking for a lot, is um, that help with services, somewhere to go when we're not feeling well. The Commission will submit its findings next month. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. The Wyala City Council is asking for community feedback on the proposed $9 million upgrade to the airport. It's expected to accommodate the growth of the city, but passengers will be slapped with a ticket price increase not supported by a major regional airline. Setting new heights for Wyala Airport, proposed upgrades a step closer to reality with a master plan in place. The security requirements that have come down from the federal government have actually given the Wyala City Council an opportunity to look at uh, a renewal of its, of its airport infrastructure. The federal government would donate $1.5 million to the project upgrade and Wyala ratepads will soon be relieved of airport costs with a proposed ticket price increase for travelling passengers instead. So we're looking to get to a place where the airport is a standalone business entity and the users of the airport are actually paying for its operation. The ratepayers should not be cross-subsidising our airport. However, Rex General Manager says they'll be advising against going ahead and claims their operating costs will increase from 600000 to around $1.8 million. And we believe that um, the likely consequences could be uh, 
either reduced flights or possibly even one of the carriers uh, exiting the route. Passengers at the airport today saying there needs to be compromise and one that doesn't impact the hip pocket of those travelling too hard. Well, the fees are quite high at the moment, so... The facility's got to be maintained, it's just what, what the community can, can wear. Council is predicting a 1% increase in passenger numbers, but the airport's main airline, Rex, disagrees with this estimate, saying that passenger numbers won't increase that much. Projecting such uh, big increases in operating costs uh, for the airline has to have a significant detriment, detrimental effect for passenger numbers moving forward. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Broken Hill councillors will have to re-vote at tomorrow night's monthly meeting on multiple projects which weren't started in the last financial year. The projects total over half a million dollars but the city's mayor is standing firm saying it shouldn't spark too much debate. Outdoor gyms, new playground equipment, some updated roadwork items all expected to be voted on tomorrow night. This asking of transferring the financial carryovers is something that happens every year. At the meeting, councillors will decide on whether to proceed with four projects which did not start before the end of the financial year. Under the Local Government Act, council needs to re-vote funds for works that are funded but have not commenced. The Mayor says that's a common process. It's like when you go to, your, you, know, you do your own budget and you say, oh, I've got a bit left over but I know I've got a gas bill coming and so I've got to keep that money to pay that gas bill. Among the projects being reconsidered, our outdoor gym equipment for Sturt Park and Picton Oval and a divider curtain for the Civic Centre. Part of the report also details 14 carryover budget items that have commenced but are incomplete, totalling over $4 million. We know that project will be completed but it's just not finished before the financial year but we've already spent money on it. The reality is that all those projects are actually in play. Another item on the meeting's agenda, waiving fees for the RSPCA and RANA when disposing of dead animals at the local tip. It's not a lot of money, I think it's about 500 a year, but for those volunteers they shouldn't be out of pocket for being a volunteer and looking after those animals. Tomorrow night's meeting starts at 6.30. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Operation Flinders closer to becoming reality and 50 tonnes of rubbish collected from the far north prompting pleas to stop littering. Hello again. Operation Flinders is a step closer to reality after being awarded $1,000 from the Wyala City Council Community Grant Fund. The Blue Light Committee also receiving a donation to assist local police working to help at-risk children from across the city. Police organised programs receiving vital funds from the latest round of the Council Community Grants, the Blue Light Committee to use the money in the upcoming school holidays. We put towards a holiday program to keep kids engaged and keep them active. Um, so some of the money will go towards, I think, laser tag, there's a bowling um, component and also uh, going to the movies. A larger project, Operation Flinders, is still waiting on money to proceed. That program aims to support troubled youth in Wyala. Local police are working closely with child protection to get it underway. Operation Flinders um, looks to um, put um, some children that are at risk on a bit of a, um, a camp hike experience. The Wyala Mayor supportive. Uh, but I believe it's a program that we should have ongoing uh, in Wyala. Also pushing for government funds to give this program the green light. Myself have actually um, written to the state government um, asking for funding for this program. Local police say the community is also getting involved to reach the program's financial target. Ever so slowly we're getting closer to our $16,500 and we still have some way to go but we've received an overwhelming um, amount of support from the community, community members who are making donations and also assisting us in our fundraising efforts. A goal to get it rolled out as soon as possible, supporting our most vulnerable. It would be ideal if we could um, be sure that we have the funding available so that we can plan for Operation Flinders, if not this year, hopefully, definitely for next year. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. With only a few weeks left until the Air Peninsula's harvest season begins, one company is preparing for its first big export. It's the first year Teaport's Lucky Bay facility will be up and running after years of planning and construction. A multi-million dollar facility years in the making, now ready to be put to the test. The Lucky Bay Teaport project gearing up for its first harvest on the Air Peninsula. The end of a long period of... of 
financing, raising, construction, um, and now we go into operations, um, which is daunting but good. The company snagging its first official client with grain marketer ADM posting a price for wheat export out of the facility, a promising sign of support for tea ports. Very pleased, um, but it's not something that's happened between yesterday and today. There has been significant work done between the teams on both sides for, um, for quite a while to get to this point. During the upcoming harvest, farmers will bring their grain to bunkers like these, which can store up to 500,000 tonnes at Lucky Bay and Lock. The grain is then loaded onto a trans shipper which can enter this shallow port. It reduces substantially uh, the amount of kilometres that the grain has to travel in trucks. The trans shipper then travels out to a Panamax vessel where it then offloads, taking our product to markets overseas. In a statement, ADM says it was a natural step for the company to join tea ports. We are doing a lot of work with other members of the trade as well. Um, they'll decide in their own time uh, when they're ready to move. We would expect to see a couple of others come on fairly soon. The countdown is on with this year's harvest expected to kick off in under five weeks. Nathan Rector, 7 Spencer Golf News. A group of volunteers have just returned from a trip to the far north, collecting over 50 tonnes of rubbish along the way. The Great Tracks clean-up crew members say the amount of discarded items is growing year on year. Tyres, fridges, barbecues, cables and TVs. Just some of the discarded items which is littering the pristine scenery of the far north. It's definitely unsightly and it is all dangerous too. Almost 30 members of the Great Tracks cleanup crew making the 1700 kilometre round trip from Corn to Inaminka picking up other people's mess. There's a lot of enjoyment on it. I won't say the work's easy sometimes. Greg Franklin has been involved in the cleanup since it began 13 years ago and says the influx of tourists tackling the unforgiving outback tracks has led to a rise in roadside rubbish. Even though there are waysides on the way with uh, things where they can have take the stuff with them, uh, it seems to be, make itself onto the road. The infrastructure of rubbish bins and so forth isn't necessarily every few hundred metres like it might be in other places that they visit. This year, crews loaded more than 50 tonnes of junk, including 358 tyres, into trailers and bags to be sent off for recycling. If they weren't coming up every year, our environment would be left in a state of absolute disrepair. The Department for Environment pleading with people to quit dumping to preserve the area's natural beauty. I would really love people to take a little bit more uh, notice of how they leave the space they visited and, and commit to leaving it a little better than how they found it. Garth Burley, 7 Spencer Golf News. It's something you don't see every day. A viewer has sent in this video of a seal fighting an octopus in Port Lincoln's Bay. What first looked like red rope around the mammal turned out to be a large octopus wrapping himself around the body. A few fast bites from the seal though saw him finish off his afternoon snack. Witnesses say the seal's a local visitor to the bay but have never seen anything like this. Stay with us after the break. Finals football fever in Broken Hill and we'll have the weather details with Britt. Welcome back. Broken Hill Finals football kicks off tomorrow night with West and South locking horns in the under-18s. The two sides have been the front runners all season, but West will go into the grand final as favourites with just one loss for 2019. The first junior girls grand final will also be played on the night as a curtain raiser to under-18s. The girls match starts just before 5.30. Remaining competitions will play their semi-finals this weekend. To more local sport now and the spring competition of Broken Hill Tennis has started with a new format and some new players. There was also plenty of soccer and netball across the weekend. Here's Patrick Reinke with the Sport Wrap. It was a chilly night here at the Broken Hill Tennis Courts when the spring competition got underway. The new format sees seven three-player teams in the fixture, with one side having the bye each week. Four hands got their season off to a good start with a win over backhands, four sets, 35 games, to two sets, 27 games. Top spins had a similar scoreline over volleys, and Russell Power, Dale Pascoe and Peter Clark were in fine form in round one, downing smashes comfortably. Staying with Broken Hill Racket Sports, the spring squash comp also started, featuring team names from the Lion King. Pumba beat Nala, 
up, Scar got over Simba and Zazu won over Timon. Match of the round saw Rachel Wheatley come from two games down to beat Tristan Summers 3-2. To soccer and in Wyala, Wanderers got a 1-0 win over Lions and Steele was also victorious. Port Lincoln saw Lincoln Knights smash Seacole Masters 8-1, Charlie Price, Doug Farr and Pete Taylor all scoring doubles. South Coast just got over Lincoln City Raiders. In Broken Hill, it was just the one game with St. Joe's fending off Alma. In the SA Amateur League, Savoy missed a good chance to climb the ladder, drawing nil all with second to last Roy Park. In Wyla Netball, YCW beat True Blue by seven goals in the prelim final. It was the final minor round in Port Lincoln. Souths United and Imperial got wins and way back finished the season undefeated, besting Warnella Rangers. In Port Piri, SM Celtic will face Blue Wren in this week's grand final after defeating Central Risdon. Oruru won the first semi-final in the northern areas, while United Yelana had it easy in the Great Flinders. Moonta also had a good win against the Cougars in the York Peninsula. And finally in Broken Hill with a bit of dodgeball action, Average Joes won the Monday night match against Skills That Kills six games to three. So that does it for another week of local sport. A reminder that if you want your sports results on 7 Spencer Golf News, send them through to localsport at sca.com.au. Now time to take a look at what's happening in the weather. Here's Britt Aylin. Good evening. It's been another mild and partly cloudy day with a cold and frosty morning. Port Augusta made it to a top of 18 degrees today. Wyala, Port Lincoln, Broken Hill and Port Pirie all 16, Adelaide 15 degrees. From the satellite, scattered cloud about the region caused by the high pressure system sitting in the bite. Moving ahead to tomorrow now, on the waters we'll see southerly winds tending southwesterly at 15 to 20 knots and there is a strong wind warning for the coast. Tomorrow is looking cold and wet with overnight temperatures dropping right down to zero at Woodna and Cleve. We can expect daytime showers over both the Eyre and York peninsulas. Port Augusta looking at a top of 19 degrees. Wyala, Woodna and Broken Hill 18, Corn 17, 16 the expected top for Port Lincoln, Coffin Bay, Port Pirie, Cleve and Kadena, Adelaide 14, Clare a top of 13 degrees. Looking further ahead now with partly cloudy conditions expected at Port Lincoln and Cleve on Thursday, a sunny day on Friday with showers on Saturday. Woodna with some frosty mornings ahead and a partly cloudy start to the weekend. Wyala looking fine on Thursday, morning frost on Friday with another fine day on Saturday. Sunny days ahead for Port Augusta with fine and partly cloudy conditions on Saturday. Kadena expecting cold and frosty mornings Thursday and Friday, Saturday looking fine. Port Perry and Clare both expecting areas of frost on Thursday and Friday, looking fine and partly cloudy to kick off the weekend. And finally, sunny days ahead for Broken Hill. And Louise, that brings us to the end of the forecast. Back to you. All right, thank you for that, Britt. And that's your local news this Tuesday. Thank you for joining us. We'll have updates later, but until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.